Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Fight Chat Friday with TKD Coach Academy. We are Adrian Byrne and Richie Ford and every Friday we hope to bring you a little bit of the very best of ITF competition, performance and coaching. And if that sounds like a conversation or a topic you'd like to get into, uh, then absolutely pause the video right here, give us a like, hit that bell button and subscribe so that you get an update every Friday when we go live. Richie, what are we chatting about today? Yeah, so today we're going to go back a little bit um almost 20 years ago at this stage so this is a very very good match in terms of level of um like being able to avoid and draw contact and maybe almost set people up with a very very nice flowing counter style so it's one of the videos that um i particularly like and is very very um enjoyable to watch so mm. we said that we would give it a, um, a little bit of a switch up this week and kind of just change the format so we'll go through a fight like we did in maybe some of the original episodes and just talk through it and see do any ideas prosper from there yeah. so this match is of Milos Maskeluk from Poland I definitely destroyed that name Maskeluk um, but this Miłosz yeah. Maskeluk that's the boy <laughs> yeah you're much better at it than me and <laughs> um, so this is from 2001 and as far as I know this was an international match yeah but was I think did he use like finals from previous Euros or Worlds or something to come up? It with was some of these it was matchups? very much an invitation only in a team event. So the uh, and generally there was a two part. There was a gala at night, but there might have been like uh, individual matches and so on, or a team match during the day. Uh, but this one had Ukraine, Sweden, and Poland, and uh, mm. there was again by invitation, and it would have been a big spectator friendly gala night, you know, at the end then as well. Um, and this one then with Miwash and uh, uh, the Ukrainian uh, Shevket. Um, and as you said, I think it's just a really dynamic match. And my memories of this go back to 2001 and watching this uh, from Polish Taekwondo Association's website. And I downloaded it at the time. And like this is something that would, I would have been showing to a lot of my students when we were talking about just principles of movement and tempo and you know when you're talking about uh ring position and drawing and there are so many little lessons in it mm -hmm. and i haven't watched it i'd say in you know eight or ten years i think so yeah no it is know. a really good one and like even just things like you said there, like the just the rhythm that he has and the, the balance the composure and the footwork it's it's just it's almost like a spectacle and it's just very enjoyable to watch it and see mm -hmm. Um, the f the full skills that he has on display, you know, it's a really good one. Yeah, so maybe we just jump straight into that, and uh, you know, we'll just pick a few moments to highlight and maybe uh, chat away through it after that. Um, but uh, the one thing we would say to everyone is as well, uh, if you're used to watching nice 4K HD quality YouTube, this is from 2001. Okay, so this comes in the the very very best at 240p. Um, so bear with it; it's worth it. Okay. So straight away back in 54 kilo land we've moved that to 57 these days mm. the guys yeah so for skinny. people that don't know as well um, Milos is in he's on the left as we speak yeah so um representing the blue corner so and it's kind of a signature reversal there isn't it so i mean uh when chef gets come in there with the the punches uh Miwash has been buried in the back uh, of the ring there and uh, he has managed to get a full reversal which is uh, it's great going really and a, a real change in ring position yeah definitely and that's something that he was really good at is of setting people up to almost feel comfortable to come and attack and then just be able to pull a little bit of space from nowhere so um, yeah. that was one of his really big skills and I think um, something that you can notice straight off as well is the the whole stance so you can see that like um he's very much loaded and balanced with a good 50 50 position on each leg to explode in any area that he wants at any time so, yeah for um, sure yeah that is something that's that's very noticeable straight off so let's uh jump back in here jump on to our two points then 
a jump punch is definitely worth two points at the time and i think that's yeah. huge um you know it, it, and we had a little bit of a chat about this two weeks ago and and you know the the relative value of the scores and everything but you know when you're potentially looking at a four point score drawing the person into it and uh, and getting that kind of a score becomes huge uh, yeah i think as well shooting off the back leg is something that was a bit more um probably something that would feature a bit more back then would, would that be fair to say oh definitely well and, and even the change of legs so mm -hmm. like there would have been more and now we'd be so used to seeing uh you know a uh, great exchange there we'll go back on that one but like we'd be used to seeing much less changing of legs fighters will tend to yeah. have their preferred leg and they stay there unless they need to pull a shot off the other leg but there would have been a lot more change of leg i think going back that f that far and willingness to take the back leg shot you know mm. we actually see a, a big step of foot to foot motion here as well which is something that we highlight a lot of be aware of this because anybody who's sharpen on the ball will step right through and that's something that we see in the next game, next exchange yeah but there's a step there foot to foot and he just closes him right down and let him really come through to hands quite strongly but and as yeah said, with a even, nice angle as well yeah stepping through to the back of the leg is really great no this is nice oh, i gotta get rid of all so we can have a look at that one again I definitely just watched this on replay so many times. Yeah, just so unfortunate that he fell over as well. Yeah, but it, it's almost like the um, you know you'd see it in in basketball uh, clips. It's one of the things that goes into the highlight reels where you know you, you, they sell the dummy so hard you almost watch the ankles break. You <laughs> know, it's the yeah yeah. Um, uh, you know, you're selling the direction, and I mean that's the whole thing. He's completely sold that going to his left. Uh, before reversing it and even the reversal of it is you know it's really quite dynamic and um, you know but like the hand position everything is so low uh, if it goes wrong it goes really really wrong but mm. it's you know he's completely sold that movement to the left before and he's always on balance it. as well yeah like he can literally move at any second that he wants to and he's just ready to act whatever way he needs to and that's kind of almost um, like a backup as well if, if you're going to have this type of style i i probably i don't know would it be as effective right now because the scoring system is a little bit different and yeah. with the live scoring and things like that i'm not so sure that it would be as effective in terms of a strategy because we have seen that the the more proactive style is rewarded a little bit more at the moment mm -hmm. so it would be interesting to see um a style like this as well yeah, I mean, it probably just game. modifies or adapts for the modern game and changes it mm -hmm. up a little bit. But like the fundamental yeah. skills of it, the balance in the stance, oh, the change of direction, the push pull is, you know, it's huge. We see that kind of face off as often either yeah i think that's just one we of those things that. a bit of a characteristic of the time as well you know when, when you don't actually know the score i think there's a tendency to kind of arrive at a, your own conclusions about where the game state is and these kind of face-offs are possible and then like nowadays where you'd actually you know you do know the score everyone's very much aware of the game state and so there's a pressure or an onus on everyone to do something yeah. because you, you're either you, trying to keep that lead yeah. or go get after it yeah yeah so you've always got like a purposeful something is to be done right now it's like the you know the acronym that we use uh, a lot of the time is you know what's important now or what is next is 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 important there is the win acronym it, it, it's what are we thinking about and mm -hmm. if i'm standing staring at my opponent well i better be winning and looking to you know force them to engage because if i'm the one who's like behind i should be doing something proactive about you know addressing the the, the game state um and i think we saw it when we were watching neil ernest against hong we saw it, you know in some of those uh, early matches as well there was an opportunity to kind of almost slow down have a look at each other and do that and i think a lot of that comes out of not knowing what the game state actually is yeah but there i think there was a skill in that as well of of being able to be present and still be aware whether you're up or down yeah. and like have a decent idea of if you're getting the scores or not now in the close match obviously it was always like 50 50 and a toss-up mm. but um at the same time like there was a skill there in knowing what a clear score was and how to go get after a clearer score 
Oh, um, definitely. Yeah, yeah, just having that inner knowledge as you go of like, okay, I'm up, I'm down, I need to score, whatever. Whereas now you don't really have to think about that as much because it's there on the board, clear to see. Yeah. Um, so it's you a, don't, it's, it's actually not something a different you have to be skill. conscious of. But, yeah. yeah it, but, you know, previously you're talking about like concentration and almost like storing something in short term memory for, for reference that I think I'm maybe two points up, I'm a point down. And that was kind of a thing that you'd try to ballpark. Um, mm. n- but it gets very, very hard to also track warnings and fouls. And, you know, yeah. that, that gets very difficult. Whereas now what you're looking at is a very, very fast processing thing of you get a snapshot of the board you've got to process the information that you're getting from that board really quickly into an actionable step, you know, from that glance. And then you have also that, you know, the change of attentional focus. So you have to go from that, you know, that narrow external focus based on your opponent to maybe the broad external focus on looking at the ring and the ring position. And then all of a sudden you have to like shift that focus over to a board and back again and not get caught out. So you know, you've got to look for those moments when you can do that and act on it. Or, of course, you have to trust your coach that they'll get you all the information yeah. you need. So let's have another little look here. Round two. Getting back into the corner straight away. But he, he uses that leg well to kind of relieve space when necessary. This is lovely. Three turning kicks. And into the punches, yeah, absolutely. There's a, I mean, it, it is interesting. Is it like they're like willing to give up that much space and, and retreat mm. to the corner? And you know, I think nowadays when we're looking at the warnings, we don't want to do that. Very nice. They're almost like almost kind of like um, even less than that 45. Uh, really, it's almost like a front kick Modified motion, front isn't kick. it? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean. Like, it's very unusual to be able to hit all three, like, so we'll have another look at it. But, like, and it's because he's, he like, he's set a pattern with his punches. He's ex- our uh, chef gets expecting him to be on a particular distance, and he's just not at the distance. So the, the second two, he's actually, th- or the, we say the last two of the three, he's actually going backwards and changing his distance as he does it. Mm. And, you know, in being able to do that and change the distance as he's throwing the kicks, um, you know, he, I think uh, Shevket is still trying to get to hands distance, you know. Um, yeah. And he's not. Finding it was like it. he was a step behind, really, wasn't he? He was like, oh, yeah, okay, a blocked kick, and then the other one was coming. A blocked kick, and then the other one was coming. Now we'd be expecting a bit of a step up from uh, from Ukraine here to like to lift the tempo and try and build to a score. Mm. Okay, nice. Very nice movement. There's a there's an absolute lesson in balance in that sequence, isn't there? Yeah, like, balance before everything, really. And yeah. that, like, that was a trademark of um, Master Yedut's students as well, wasn't it? That back kick into kind of like a, a blitz type. Yeah, constantly so they would go back it. and then back in. So out and in, out and in. Nice sequence. Yeah, but I mean, if we if we talk through it, like, or, or you know, as you look at it in terms of what is actually happening, you know, you have that. You know, we're, we start with the back kick when we're obviously going backwards, but we're straight to forwards. We have mm. uh, backwards into the uh, thing, forwards into the blitz, forwards back, forwards. You know, there's a that real pull, push pull on direct on the distance, and it looks simple, but what it really does, you know, is when you're trying to actually put someone on the end of a technique, like it, try a very simple exercise when you're at home, like you know, give one person a side kick and ask the other person to just be on the wrong distance and stay in a straight line. So mm. be too close or be too far away. And your job with as the side kicker is to get your leg extended on the hip or arm. And it, you know, and see just how difficult that actually is to do um, when the focus is just on one person modifying the yeah. distance. And when that person modifying the distance is adding in, you know, punches on the way forward, kicking on the way forward, kicking on the way back, you know, switch kicking, spin, you know, a, a back kick on the way back. It, it is actually really difficult to put it there. You've got to spoil it somehow. You have to make contact. You have to change, it, take control of the distance. And I think what happens here is you get a whole exchange where it's happened fast enough that Shevka hasn't realized he's not in control of that distance. I mean, at some point, he'd be better off just literally going, oh, okay, I'll take a step back and then come back in with a leg yeah. or something to where it's like you've got to actually take the control away. And, you know, it, it's a murderous sequence in terms of score. Like, I mean, to, to try and guess where, the, you know, what damage that's done to the scoreboard. 
Um, this like that that back kick is quite nice as well, just the yeah. way it fits in, lovely. But um, something that I really like from here is like just the presence where he's not. He just it's like he he's a second ahead of everything, and it's just he has the time to okay. Here's what's been thrown at me. Let's do yeah. this. But it's just done in such a fast um, process in his head that he he just flows through it. Mm. But it's not where he's just like okay. He's he's decided that he's going to do this. He's kind of you can see he's reacting as he goes. It's as not like a combination. Even that shift back. Yeah, exactly. It's just yeah. like completely in the moment, completely just adapting to what is there and what he's seeing at at the moment, and just. To, that's just great to see because like this guy from Ukraine, like I don't know how the styles were at the time, but to me, he looks a little bit unorthodox and, and it's hard mm -hmm. to read people like that. And if you can counter somebody who's unorthodox, then your level is even for me, it's just even at another level in terms of your counter attacking but ability. He's done that by basically putting it on. Uh, he, he's taken control of that tempo and like he's, the, you know, and, and the distance at the same time. So like he's deciding mm -hmm. the tempo and the distance the fight happens at. And as Ukraine is looking to react to the distance that Miwash has given him. So he's gone longer. OK, well, I come into that. Oh, I'm being hit. And then I'm, I'm, I'm continuing in this direction. Now he's coming back. So I move into the space. I'm being hit. And a lot of it is actually simpler in some ways. It's like he'll go backwards. The assumption is Ukraine has to come forwards and then he comes and meets him in the middle. And, you know, it's rep repetitions on patterns in, in some ways, but it's done so elegantly and in with such flow. And it's not like it's psychic going forward, psychic going back and we're repeating that pattern. It's the fact that it goes into, it was a, the, we'd almost refer to it now as Ukrainian style blitz because it's something that Katya did so well but like that little hot blitz into the backward movement into the you know the uh, mm. the front leg into the back kick and so on like there's some lovely sequences to it but as you said for me if I was to like put up a bit of ITF take one a video uh, that describes the you know the psychological concept of flow uh, you know that's a really good example of it of like if you're in flow and things are happening naturally if the world seems to have slowed down around you if you're happy if things are happening without conscious thought and it's effective like yeah there you go that's it I yeah it's great example and that's something that we actually spoke about as well in a couple of the, the interviews and things we did during the first lockdown mm. of being like that idea of choking because yeah. you're not present in the moment and i know that and um, we spoke about our show with it in detail and um, and yeah that that it just shows it there like when you're in that moment and when you're just flowing it's just it's just everything is just so much smoother yeah Definitely. Let's get these guys to have a little bash. Distance is very long. Mm. Yeah. To be able to go straight off the back leg, you know, and the other person not even move, really, yeah. is like that speaks to a huge distance. I mean, I don't think we was, see that distance now. Was the stance a little bit more static back then in terms of a little bit more on the heels? Because like... You can see Milos is quite bouncy and quite agile on the feet yeah. as opposed to the Ukrainian guys are just a little bit more static as in he's a bit more on his heels every now and again. I do think he's almost looking to, um, uh, like if you think of the controllables, like um, I think what he is trying to actually do is to deal with Milos' dis distance by crowding him. So mm. like, okay, at this stage it doesn't look like it because everything's white, but when he starts to move in, we saw it right at the very beginning of the first round. We've seen it once or twice and it hasn't worked for him. But he's looked to kind of almost squeeze the space, squeeze the space, squeeze the space. And sometimes if you're doing that and if you're really looking to squeeze someone's space, you're you're kind of setting yourself for the technique that you're going to throw when they eventually burst or move. And that will kind of bring you down a little bit onto your heels, I suppose. But I don't know if that was always his style or if that's just his strategy yeah. for trying to deal with me wash here. Um, but like... You can see he's trying to move in, uh, mm. you know. It's very interesting, though, even with this bit when uh, Miwash is going towards the back, that, you know, Shevket is coming in quite open. Miwash is coming in, you know, is countering almost on the spot. And, you know, there's no, there's nothing on that line. Like, there's, there's no side kick, there's no front kick. It's not side on. Both parties are, like, are fully front facing. And, mm -hmm. like, again... You do get that sometimes off of punches, but it's it. I think you know you think it's rare enough to to see nowadays. But um, I think part of that is just because of the way the push pull has happened, and you know uh, Miwash is dragging off the line and opening out 
uh, Szewkiewicz's stance a little bit. And I think that was a huge factor of Maciejdu's movement style and the, the Polish te- team of the early 2000s, their movement style. Because you're looking to open up the, the jumping double punch or the turning kick, that if you could pull the person off of their side kick, um, you know, uh, and get a, an angle to the, the center line of the body, that like opened up an awful lot of opportunities for scoring without efficient counters. And I think that's a lesson that's still kind of appropriate now. You know, especially and now people see, are more side facing. You can see as well that his scores are just so much clearer, making the judge's job easy to mm. note. Whereas like the little bit of a sequence afterwards was a bit more scrappy. Yeah. But he's always getting those clear, obvious scores that's just making the referee's job super easy. Um and you you can like back then as well, obviously you have the, the written system where they have to actually look down probably to, to make a note of that. Yeah. So that that even makes more of a difference back then, I think. So it's very, very important to note as well that uh, we can't grab now. So we see that at the end of that sequence there. Just yeah. a bit of a high up at the end. It becomes a foul rather than a warning. Yeah. Yeah. Let's have a look. You can afford to leave the distance long now. I think that um like for somebody who kind of lived on the edge of the ring a little bit even in this match he i don't think he gave away that many warnings for traveling did he no no i don't think so and i think mm. you know coming out of the same stable himself daniel jawa who we've looked at before um you know and, and a lot of those fighters like they gave up they became very very comfortable at making the decision on the second to last or the last match um about what the next action was going to be so they're pulling people, and they're, but they're comfortable pulling people to that particular position and then acting from there. And, you know, yeah, it's a confidence game, you know, on the edge like that sometimes as well. So, uh, but I don't yeah. think, um, yeah, I don't think you travel often that people, much. Yeah, often people as well will kind of almost take that for granted and just say, oh, these people come to me, come to me, come to me. And mm. then all of a sudden you run out of space or you go to throw a technique and you end up coming back over the mat with one leg. So I think, I think, I that, think the big thing that they do that's different is they're not put, they're not going to the, the, that last mat uh, under pressure. They're not doing it mm. as you know under the pressure of an attack. So they're they're able to get to that last mat in in stance and in position to reset and go rather than arriving with momentum and then trying to make a decision sure. as you're already going backwards. So there's no defensive side kick putting them there. There's the back kick occasionally. But they, as it, there's that signature like back to forward with the back kick into the blitz kind of thing, um, and then there's the bailout that they do exceptionally mm. well. You know, they, um, they drop and the always shoulder. Always being on balance is is what allows all of that happen. Yeah. I think. Yeah. You know, they can always move. They always have the balance to move. They're not kind of ever stuck in no man's land, really. And I mean that's massively down to the stance and the principles in the stance. So you know there's a whole style that's thought through from start to finish that's built off of a particular stance and facing. And you can see where there's like same with Daniel. There's no real side kick in this. Like the mm. stance is far more balanced in terms of the the softer knees, the the very central, even slightly forward lean of the body position. Um, you know, and the 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 way it's covered, etc. And that forty five placement of the feet to where the forward to back the left to right is is all possible and open and it's like uh, there's a bit of a you have to concede something to do that you're not going to have that ba- uh, you know quite that balanced movement available to you if you go side facing you yeah. have a better defensive position but you don't have the ability to move in each direction as freely you just don't and the, the distance is slightly adjusted then as well because of that obviously the more side facing mm-hmm. you are the more the distance will naturally extend mm. and then it's, it can be even more difficult to shoot off the back leg and things like we've seen what milos here was able to do so yeah that stance definitely favor that style but um we, we would see more side facing these days really but you can see yeah. the benefits of, of being able to transition which is something that we uh, touched on even last week yeah definitely i mean with the, the transition side of it is is definitely something else but like you can imagine how much certainty there is when 
you're not going to change your stance. This is your stance mm-hmm. and you're, you're not going to transition. You're not going to look at techniques that don't comply with the restrictions of the stance. Yeah, but they don't, they, they will be forced to transition if you aren't in the half yeah. facing because you, you can punch easily from that stance. Mm. Whereas if you were settled in the side facing, I think you're forced to transition more. What's really interesting though, is if you go back to that time when we might look for a match at some point and you looked at what Germany did in particular, yeah. um, okay. And there was a t- like an almost like a backwards facing L stance, you know, that some of the competitors adopted, where it's like your back leg was positioned already set for the, to load that sidekick. And the guard was a very tight covered guard and the, the body lean was back and everything was about to squeeze the space. That that front leg sidekick is there. The ability to go over the shoulder with the turning kick or hook kick is there. And it's like that is where we're going to be and we're going to play the numbers and that wasn't every German but that was just something that was mm-hmm. common off the Germans at the time and go on and I was just going to say based on that as well it's very hard to be agile like we've seen with Milos with that yeah. when that back leg is no, loaded no. isn't it yeah you're playing the percentages you're going like it's, it's the old uh, uh, Arsenal of the 90s it's like well you know you, you, we Stack. might only score one goal, but you're not getting any. So this yeah. is the kind of this is the kind of thing when you take that more defensive approach. Sometimes is that you go well, you're not getting scores, and I'm going to play the numbers, and eventually one of my sidekicks will land, or eventually one of my you know. Whereas I think the game that's been espoused there by me watching this clip is something that's far more open. It's like I'm going to give you chances to get scores, and if you're good enough, you'll have them. But if you're not mm. good enough, I'll catch it. And then, you know, I'm really going to punish you for it. So I think it's it, it's that nature of like, you know, within other sports as well, if you have a counterattacking style, you know, you, you do have to concede a certain amount of space. You have to concede something to your opponent first to give you the opportunities. But when the opportunities come, if you can take them, they're really clear and they're really momentum changing. So, you know, they, they really like flip the switch on how the match feels. Mm, it's a pure showcase of hit without getting hit isn't it yeah. just a complete control of distance timing all those good things that people often take for granted in a really high level competitor yeah for sure so again i would just say to people is like you know this is something that was definitely in my study book 19 years ago um you know and for the the next couple of years after that um I yeah, we'll, got, we'll post the link in the description yeah. if people want to go back and watch the full fight a few times or whatever yeah yeah which was an interesting one because like this is one of the follow-ups we often have is like uh and it's happened for many of us over the years when you like we started very you know quite far away from international competition of course and you know uh over the years you progress you improve and you get to join in but i actually sparred me watch in um uh viking cup a few years later okay um but when I when I sparred him, he'd had his so- shoulder surgery. He'd had a, a dislocated shoulder, and he'd had sh- a shoulder surgery, and he was quite protective of his hands. So we uh, he didn't get to showcase, you know, quite that much. But it's uh, you know, but like what, what was the what was the distance like? Um, <laughs> yeah, for like for me, it, like it felt like a, it was a very flowing distance. Like hard, the, hard to read it, like yeah. But yeah, equally, yeah, I, I think the way we would have been at the time was um, would have been quite you know sidekick lead uh but the back leg would have been much more used it would have been turning kick there would have been switch back kick there would have been a little bit more you know uh push and pull on those techniques but Mm -hmm. it was like for me i just say yeah it was like we were lucky at that stage viking cup we had the scoreboards so it was a low scoring match he got ahead at the start of the second round and then he basically took the foot off completely and was just a nightmare to chase down um (laughs) and that's what that's what it was like that's what he uh, was though like did he did he allow you to put the pressure forward a lot um not massive like it it was just a case of uh you always kind of felt when you were attacking and this is like a again you, you learn your little principles from it but like always felt when you were attacking him that you were that close to hitting him like it was all like and whenever range. you just reach too far he's there so gotcha. and that was kind of how that felt like so it kind of felt like i was having to offer an overextended shot to take a, sh- mm-hmm. a chance at a you know a counter um and that's kind of like i did manage to score like uh you know a decent sidekick that way as well where it was like it was a deliberately overextended lead that i got a defensive sidekick off of as he like looked to come to hands and it's like okay yeah. something there but it, you did i did kind of feel like you know you were playing his like I, when i finished it I, I had played his game and it was like okay and that's why i lost that one but uh but it's Matt, not the that- only reason but that's it but they are the masterful counterfighters though the people who yeah. are, allow you to be 
to shoot and they're just outside your range yeah. but they're close enough to hit you if you make a mistake yeah for sure but um you know uh class act uh great fighter his sister is still competing i think at the moment uh, uh still uh, involved in the club in poland um you know and they're still producing great movers and great fighters over there and uh you know i would just like take that match as yeah it's definitely something of its time but there's mm-hmm. you know wonderful lessons in how to how to move how to prepare how to link shots together and you know how to basically lead your opponent to play your game i think there's an awful lot in there yeah great one definitely worth to watch again for anybody who enjoyed that definitely so do you want to jump into it? we had a, a question we kind of fancy taking a go at as well that was given over mm-hmm. instagram over the last few days so um the question uh came in from the notorious sajan um so uh how do i improve kicks faster and what should i do regularly um so I suppose there was a couple of ways that we could look at this one. And uh, the first thing that jumped to your mind was, how do I kick faster? And the first thing that jumped to my mind was, how do I improve faster? And I suppose they're, they are different. So Definitely, yeah. do you want to kind of throw a couple of topics at the, uh, the, the kick faster uh, uh, part of the question? Yeah, this, like, this is something what... Um, we often see come up on questions and things and people want to know the answer to this question because it can be obviously very very beneficial to be able to kick faster move faster but of course when we have um, it's not really a straightforward thing but here we go with a nice kind of um, a graphic to give you some basic understanding principles so first off we would like to develop like a good structure so just a good base of like so we see here like a strong core is vital to all speed and power output Mm -hmm. and that that's relevant as well in terms of just your your body as a unit like the idea of trying to launch a cannon from a a canoe you know an unstable surface and something that doesn't have a lot of strength and control can be a very tricky thing to do so if you want to be able to launch with great power and great force you need to have that solid structure what comes often in the term in terms of strength so you need to have that good base of strength in like the big compound lifts so that's something that obviously takes time and it's not something that you can just go off and do now and expect results tomorrow so that's more of a long-term thing and then on top of that you can build these other things that we have listed here so the idea of the fast twitch fibers so using plyometric training and you often see people using the resistant bands and things like that mm-hmm. but you do need to have that um structure underneath first i do believe and then of course like having efficient techniques so like is there more efficient ways you can use your technique of course we know there's no perfect technique because the situation adapts and varies so much but this is more about the, can you be a bit more efficient in terms of your <clears throat> so like your positioning and your body are you kind of leaking any any areas like is your posture for example way behind as you carry your technique sure. obviously that's going to hamper the ability to transition very explosively and things like that so and then you can look at your body composition so obviously the more excess body fat that you have the it's like carrying around an extra weight so it's like can you go kick and hold in a five kilo weight in your hands all the time it's very very difficult so um the the leaner you are obviously the faster you will be as well and i think something that is very much overlooked is the whole idea of practicing to kick quickly so or or like a lot of time you can just simply kick quicker on the pads and do things like that and it will really improve and that's kind of um going back to the first point as well of developing this fast fast twitch fiber mentality and it is a mentality in a way as well so you need to be able to kick quickly um in practice if you want to kick quickly generally in your sparring and in performance as well mm-hmm. so like one of the things that i kind of wanted to jump on there from the point of view of the um the the flip side of this is like how do we improve our kicking quickly um rather than the how do we actually make our kicks faster but we'll link the two a little bit so what i was thinking is there's a few things that you can do a little bit that will get you um we say outcomes that will make it feel like or look like uh, that your kicking experience is quicker and you can do them pretty uh, you know fairly right away and the first thing that you can look at is the the when and the how so 
if your distance to your opponent isn't correct, you're going to kick slower because you're going to have to make a bigger preparation. They're going to see it coming. Um, if the timing is wrong, it's going to be slower because, again, if you can time your kick so that the person is moving directly onto it or if, you're, um, if, if they're at the right range, the kick is going to be quicker again. And a very simple thing that you can do, like is, as I said, practice fast kicks. You want to make sure that your practice is geared at having the, the person at the right distance. One more simple thing is that if you're preparing to hit very hard or your hardest, like get a kick shield out there uh, and you want to smash that kick shield, fold it in half, leave the person on the other side of the kick shield winded, guarantee you the shapes that you make, your preparations, what you do with your body is going to give away the power that that kick is going to have. Whereas if the intent is to disguise the kick and make sure that they don't see the kick until the last possible moment and that it arrives at the pad as quickly as possible, regardless of the power, it's going to take a different shape. So we want to practice in the shapes that we're going to, uh, and in the motions and in the rhythms that we're actually going to use in sparring. So practicing off the spot with no prior movement is not necessarily a good way to practice getting faster at kicking. Um, practicing with a without a live opponent as well is another thing. So even if it's you know through the surrogate of the person holds a glove in front or for you but moves with you or something or or holds a flipper or a, a paddle, that's going to be a little bit better than a person standing in uh, holding a heavy bag or kicking a heavy bag or a kick shield because you're hitting a static target with your maximum force and that's just never going to happen in sparring. You know, that's just something that we don't see. It's um, it's unrealistic to to practice for something. You know, it, it, there's no harm in doing it. You want to develop power. You want to do it. You know, okay, we can do that. But that's what you're doing. That's almost supplementary training in the same way as going to the weights room is. But for you getting a kick to land an opponent, you have to throw that from balance. You have to throw that from movement. You have to match where they're going. And that will make you faster. You'll, you'll seem... Like a person who seems fast, it seems like they have all the time in the world to get the kick to land there. But it doesn't mean that they arrive in the shortest possible time. They just arrive in the correct time. And I think that's actually something that I was thinking of as you were chatting through that. The whole idea of, um, what was it, Conor McGregor said, that timing beats speed. Yeah. And that's so important. Like that's something that we actually don't think of when we're like, okay, I want to be faster. And just think of that whole idea of the timing and the distance. So yeah, Mm. being able to think of it from both areas the whole idea of like the the physical training and the physical development but then as well like we always have to bring it back to what we're doing in the ring and what we're trying to achieve Mm -hmm. and it's so important those things that you just touched on there of the timing the distance and all of that and balance and we've actually seen a lot of these things in today's clip as well from Milos and like at times very very quick off the mark and catching his opponent by surprise yeah and I mean this the same applies for how do you slow someone down because we don't often think of, we think about in sparring, how do I get faster? Because it seems like that's something that we can impact or influence more. But you can also slow someone down. And the way that you do that, let's take the, the simplest example that jumps into my mind is, you have one person who wants to blitz and the other one who wants to catch them with a defensive sidekick. The longer the stance that the person who's making the defensive sidekick is in, the more time they've basically got in their stance to absorb the, the distance covered with the blitz and find their way to make that. And that's why you'll see it with a, a backward moving action or with a, a jump back. Um, you're preserving the distance between the heads of the two people as you move backwards and you're giving time to extend mm-hmm. that leg. So uh, the person drawing the blitz is going to look to stay low, to shorten the distance, to extend the hand as far as they possibly can as they push through. And the person defending is going to look to extend their stance, lean back, get as, you know push the weight into the back leg, And then they can delay the kick until the distance is correct almost. But, you know, we want to think about slowing our opponent down. And I think that's something that Miwash does very, very well in those videos where he appears, he drifts his head forward and leans into techniques and then you're reaching for it and then he just drifts the head back and it's not there anymore. I mean, we spoke a little bit after the last chat about leaning in Taekwondo Mm. and it's not the same thing as what we meant then leaning as a defense as in leaning out of the way of techniques maybe doesn't always work out very well in ITF but you know leaning into techniques to draw something is a different you know a different concept so you know there's the the whole idea of distance manipulation there and things like that as well you're hiding you're perceived to be a bit closer and and, but your feet are actually in the same with that having the hand in front thing you know that you know if you're keeping the hand up there it does foreshorten 
and you know the eyes can be tricked and you can misjudge your distance a little bit that's why one of the things that we don't you know teach a very close guard most of the time because it gives very good like information about distance because this is now mm-hmm. one chunked unit of of person and once the, the guard is mobile and the front hand moves a little bit you know you arrive at a position where now you're having to take in way more perceptual information and there's a better chance of a mistake yeah not only that as well just a touch on that idea of the the front hand is like mm. you kind of want to deal with the problems before they get to you yeah. so like if you're, you're very close especially like it's not boxing for us we're not always living in that closer range mm. because we have the kicks involved so if you can control the problems before they get to your body line it gives you a better opportunity to set up counters and um, both with hands and legs then as well so you don't want to be dealing with the problems when they're on top of you you want to be dealing with the problems when they're out far and um, not too far obviously because just like we said with milosh today you want to be able to put people in a range where they think they can hit you but you're just outside of that range but you still have the ability with balance um, and timing to, to shoot back if necessary absolutely so hopefully that has gone some way towards answering the question about uh, kicking fast or kicking better faster whichever it was and uh, and giving some uh, some thought so hopefully everybody you enjoyed that uh, clip from Miwash and uh, Mr. Shevket from Ukraine um, going back to 2001 uh, 19 whole years ago and making me feel old because uh, that doesn't seem like that long ago to me so um, hopefully you enjoyed that and if you have suggestions for next week uh, please send them through to us any of the social media channels Instagram, Facebook etc We'd lo- or in the comments of this video and we'd certainly love to get into any topics that are of interest to people who are watching and following along Fantastic So yeah that's all we have for this week's episode So <clears throat> if you look to get a bit more daily updates and things like that so if you are at the moment you're enjoying our content and you would like to delve a bit deeper check out the daily updates we have on facebook and instagram and until then we shall see you next week next week